There you are, and welcome to the Nine Questions Podcast, where I'm going to bring exciting insights and wisdom from some of the niftiest leaders in our community. So I'm your host, Sam Thompson, and I'm excited to share all this with you. Each podcast is going to have, and a, you know, someone that's an authority on the subject matter that we're going to talk, and we're going to look at stories and strategies and tips on how to live life in our magical world, right? How to navigate today's uh, adventure, so to speak. So whether you're looking for inspiration or tips or some wisdom, some motivation, practical advice, this podcast is for you. So tune in the ninth of each month for the new nine questions. Um, don't forget to subscribe and rate. Share would be cool. Now keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times and let's get on with the show. Thanks for watching. All right. Well, welcome to another uh, tantalizing episode of The Nine Questions. And I, I am very honored to have a dear friend of mine, Nikki Schluth, um, visit with us and share some of her wisdom and experience. And uh, she's going to be sharing some things uh, that she's gone through. So you don't have to, right? <laughs> so we, we're going to have some knowledge dropped. Um, now, Nikki, if you don't know her, she's been practicing uh, witchcraft for over 30 years. Um, she's a formally trained initiate and priestess in the religious order of witchcraft. She's founded her own private order focusing on American witchcraft, which the Society of Witchcraft and Old Magic. I get that right? Okay. That's and good. that's based in Connecticut. Connecticut. Um, Nikki holds a master's degree in integrative health and healing. So she's just not a normal schmuck. She's actually a trained one. So <laughs> we, um full-time professional occult teacher and practitioner um, is trained through the highest level of shamanic dream teacher facilitator trainings and Robert Moss's School of Active Dreaming. Dreaming. She's also a Reiki master teacher, um, shamanic Reiki, Reiki master practitioner, and certified hypnotherapist, to name a few. Um, Nikki is also very active in uh, the Morgan's Call Retreat. She's an active role in that. Um, she has, uh, an, she's an author and has written uh, a book called The Goddess Seals, which I'm going to, we're going to talk about. Um, and she's got other books that are, that are forthcoming and maybe um, she'll, she'll give us some insight on some of that. So Nikki, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me today. This is fun. All right. So let's jump right on in it. Um, what do you wish you knew um, about um, your practice when you started uh, well, <clears throat> I suppose if I knew exactly how much discipline mm. it would take uh, to really gain, you know, tangible skill, uh, I don't know, though, now I'm thinking if I knew that, maybe I would have been more hesitant <laughs> <laughs> to jump right in. But, you know, like many of us, I, I didn't know uh, um, as a beginner to the craft decades ago that that would be the case. I was just inspired, you know, by this avenue of spiritual and, and magical exploration. Um, but but that is one thing that stands out to me as that I didn't know at the time that, you know, I absolutely know now is the discipline that it takes. Um, you know, to really make something deep and lasting and skillful from it. I think that's why I call it a practice. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I, you, know I, you mean you don't wake up and go, hmm, I think I'll witchcraft today. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Actually, you know what? I'm glad. So uh, it's that's funny that <laughs> that thought, because I feel like people do that, though. Um, you know, they'll wake up and decide that today is the day that they're going to do some magic. But what that kind of shows me in the bigger picture is that there's a lot of people uh, creating a separation mm, mm -hmm. in their lives between the magical and the mundane. Like they go to their job and they feel like, oh, I wish I was at home at the altar doing my craft but the thing is, you've got to have an open and enchanted worldview such that your magic is all the time. You know, you're, you've got to be with your gods 
with awareness of the nature of this reality and your consciousness and your energy and what you can affect on the fly when you're away from the altar, you, you got, you know, you got to do both. It can't, it can't be uh, differentiated like that. So that's yeah, louder for those in the back. <laughs> you know, right. Uh, that's, that's one of my, yeah, that's good. I mean, cause I'm going to be honest. I struggled with it when I started. Right. You know, because, you know, I'm not in it as long as you have, but back 20 years ago, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, and I'm in the rural South. So things are a, a little bit different here. You know, you couldn't wear your hubcap pinnacle around town, you know, because they <laughs> jerk a knot in your tail, you know, right. I mean, it's, you know, but I think that is, that's a very important distinct distinction is that there's, there, there is not a mundane and magical you. There's just you, right? you know, you are wherever you are, you know, and you need to take all of you with you. You know, because I, I think that's, that's, uh, yeah, we, more people need to just be whole, you know, because I think you're splitting yourself apart and you're only half a person. Oh, I can't do that because I'm not, yet or whatever. I, yeah. Yeah. You know, and your magic is really only as good as your ability to hone your focus. So if you're doing chores and paying bills and doing a job that maybe you perceive as less rewarding than your spiritual work or whatever, you're causing yourself suffering because your focus is elsewhere when you could really be putting your energy into the things that you're doing. You know, you wouldn't be getting paid to do the things that you do if someone didn't want you to do them. So they're important to someone. Mm -hmm. And why not do that with a, a magical integrity that that's going to fuel your practice and make your magical focus better all around. Like you said, hey, you know, and so much the magic is I'm paying my bills. <laughs> <You> <laughs> Yeah, you know that's I mean, magic. Hey, that shit just dropped out of the sky. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Um, so I've got to ask because I, you know, me growing up in, in community, I've always kind of been for the most part solitary. You know, um, wore it like a badge for a while. You know, um, and I did you know open groups, you know, through cups. You know, we we did open group, but for the most part, just did my own thing on my own thing, right? right. Um, so what is what is it like? Can can you talk a little bit about what it's like to start your own order or coven? What what is I mean? Because you go from everybody else kind of handling things to you know your you know top of the food chain and get all the all the blame, right? And then how that works? <laughs> yeah, I get all the credit and all the blame. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. It's, I think, you know, obviously we all start off solitary because we realize, or most of us, we realize the craft is there. We start to explore what it is. And um, I was, I, I studied on my own and practiced here and there on my own in my 20s. Um, and then uh, when I was in, in my young 30s, that's when I took my formal training in the religious order of witchcraft. Um so that was a very small order and I was with them for a long time and I trained into their priesthood and, and, and got training there. But um, uh, eventually uh, I went off on my own because uh, I wanted to be able to do things differently than they were. Then I was allowed to do things there. I wanted to expand the curriculum. I wanted to be able to augment rituals and also teach in different ways. And uh so that's why I started the Society of Witchcraft and Old Magic. Now, it, it, it is a very unique order. Um, it We are about to, we will have our official 10-year anniversary, um, even though I've actually been training people in the craft for longer than that. Um, but it was uh, during... 2014 that I was in the process of leaving the religious order of witchcraft and making my plans for how I would formulate my own curriculum and all of this. Um, and so during that year, I worked on it and I already had students under me, but it was January 1st of 2015 that I said, okay, we are now officially not that, but this, and here we go. Now it is a private occult order, you know, with like the traditional year and a day training and um, privacy oaths and, and stuff like that. So it is very different than a lot of coven scenarios that people may have encountered. Um, but 
a lot of those various covens that pop up go away um, pretty quickly, actually, like within a few years, uh, because it's really hard <laughs> to, um, <laughs> because it's really hard to keep it going in a high integrity way. Um, there's all kinds of issues that, that pop up. Um, there's, if it's being run by multiple people, you know, there's often politics and power struggles and, and stuff like that. And I just kind of run it. Stuff. I just run it as a benevolent solo leader. Like I do have a council, like, so that if I were ever to become insane or, you know, be doing something <laughs> that, that wasn't cool for the group, like they would be able to band together and make a, a choice as to what needed to be done. Um, so there are uh, some checks and balances, but I mean, I'm in, in charge of it. And that way, like the tone is just always always set uh in a way that is fair that you know i try to uphold what's always going to be the best for the most people but of course that means you're never pleasing everyone <laughs> um a lot of times people have very personal unspoken expectations of what they expect a group to provide for them and then they start off all gung-ho and then when it doesn't provide that um they get all angsty, you know, um, and upset and stomp away because, you know, so it's, it is tough. A lot of times what people are expecting too are, um, like BFFs and, you know, that they, they, they expect that there's suddenly this community is going to be different than the rest of the world, which in a lot of ways it is, but they expect like, oh, everyone's going to be equal friends and there's you know there's gonna but we have 120 people uh right now and it continues to grow um a little bit each year just organically we don't advertise or or anything like that um it's all word of mouth if people have heard about it because someone said it was the best thing they did then they want to know and so that's it just kind of grows a little bit i can only train so many people per year too so there's a limit um on it but uh it's tough it at the same time it is such a huge honor and i know that i'm creating a really really awesome legacy of mm. magical te magical teaching we are not a religious so yes i was trained in the religious order of which of witchcraft but the society of witchcraft and old magic my order is not religious actually we are not religious at all I, I don't teach people what to believe in any way we're very academically oriented this mm. is like an intellectually stimulating order it's a lot of learning uh intellectual learning i, I can uh, see where that would cause problems <laughs> right um i don't allow political discussions in our group forum of any kind. Mm -hmm. um, I, and it's not, I'm not a fan of censorship, but the thing is I want my order to function as a, a microcosm of being able to be kind to people that have different beliefs than yourself without having an argument about it. Cause that's not what we're there to do. We're there, the religious order of witchcraft we call it a coven because it is an amazing community. Like people have community in this place that they have never fathomed would be possible. And that is, that's maybe the thing I'm the most proud of actually. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult. We're not there to do that kind of thing. And uh, so those are some of the ways that I try to keep it peaceful and, you know, set the tone. Uh, we're there to learn. We're like it's it's a school of occult training at its heart. So, and I think that's a big misnomer. Sometimes is that this is this is an easy path. You know, looking at the umbrella of paganism to include heathenry. To and I'm not ex excluding anybody. I'm just using that because it's uh, I'm simple. So it's you know, but this is not easy. No, you know, the the this is hard because. To me, the biggest challenging part about my practice is me. Right. <laughs> you, know, you know, it doesn't matter how much fairy dust I sprinkle on something. If I'm out of whack, it ain't working. 
Exactly. It, you know, and until, you know, I get back in whack, you know, but, you know, some people don't know they're out of whack, it, you know, and it's that self learning, that self knowledge, that self, you know, discovery. That's the hardest thing because that, to me, that's where the magic is. Once you got that figured out, then everything else works. And that's just me though. But yeah, you got to dig deep and it, you're right. It is, it is not easy. Uh, not easy at all. Uh, it, and so the learning is, you know, it provides those channels for self-discovery uh, and for just getting back. I like your phrase, get back in whack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I guess if you go out of whack, then the you got to get back in whack, in yeah. Whack. <laughs> Which sounds contradictory in a way, but you know, <laughs> whack sounds wacky. But what? Anyway, maybe. But being wacky is good. Yeah, you can take that. <laughs> you, you can take that. Share, spread that stuff around. Yeah, we'll we'll all be in be in whack. Is, yeah, <laughs> which it, which like in a more occult uh, language, we might say like having the ability to. Uh, regulate your own ground state. Yeah. You know, that, that's getting back in whack. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would translate that. Yeah. That's, that's what, what you're saying here is, uh, yeah, we're out of whack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I think everyone knows what we're talking about now. <laughs> All right. So you've just published not, well, your, your most recent work, your, your goddess seals. Please talk about that. What what made you want to write? What is it about? And what made you want to write that? All right. That's some heavy, that's some heavy lifting. It's yeah. So here's what happened. <laughs> See um, what had happened was I, I got those stories. <laughs> I, I, I'm classically trained in American witchcraft. And we were, you know, my, the order I was trained in has had a um emphasis in Western magic and the use of the classical grimoires. And so I was taught very early on how to access things like the Key of Solomon and utilize those seals, the Key of Solomon, the Goetia, those seals, when you are prepared enough as a magician to use them, what they do is they are like a bat signal or a VIP calling card that helps you to access a powerful being who will then dispatch from amongst their legions local spirits who are able to actually help you get the thing done that you're trying to do magically it's it adds a level of power to your magic that you will not realize until you do it and you see the difference in how that working played out okay so here i am for years utilizing these but i'm not really an angelically oriented person. <laughs> I've been a devotee of the Morrigan for a long time. And so I'm doing all this, these powerful magical workings and going, I'm online all the time. Okay, where there's got to be a seal of the Morrigan. There's got to be a seal of Hecate. Where are they? I want their seals because I want, I want, I already have connections with them, I, but I want something that says time to dispatch the cavalry for a particular, you know, because let's be real, conceptually in magic, when you call upon a deity, they are not transporting down Star Trek styles themselves in a physical energy body to help you do your work. You have a, a mental, a, you have a conscious connection to your deity, but there's millions of people who do <laughs> like, so they're not just like, you know, and, and I've been told, and a lot of people have validated this, like a lot of the polytheistic deities, they do not, they say they, they are not omniscient, omnipotent beings. Like they have a personality and an awareness granted they're, they're wise and old and immense and have many, many, many contacts, but they're not looping in to help you do that thing. Right. So who is like, when you call upon your gods, it's their contacts who do have energy bodies here, who are less well-known, who are free. I always say that to my students, like, okay, when you have tech problems with your computer, I don't care if Bill Gates is your best friend. He's not the one coming to fix it. You can call him because he's your best friend, right? You've got his number. You're like, Bill, man, you know, my Microsoft thing is crashing again. And, and he's going to be like, oh, dude, I'm really sorry. Let me hook you up with 
Bob. Paula, who's in your area, <laughs> who's really good and knows how to fix that thing, right? So he's not going to do it though. He's way too busy. He's got a bajillion things to do. So he's going to send, he's going to give you someone though that can help you. And that's what's really happening. And that's why the seals from the old grimoires are so good because these famous angels from the mage adepts back in the time, they've got contacts, they've got legions and they'll, they can dispatch someone local. So all this time I'm looking for that equivalent and that for years. And finally I was like, you know what? If I'm looking for this, me, one, one single magician over here, there have to be other people out there who, mm -hmm. who want this, who want these tools already ready to go for their parchment papers, for their spell work, for, you can use them in so many ways. So anyway, I created a seal for the Morrigan. And, you know, when, as the start, because she's my main squeeze. So like I, would sit in sacred space, go into meditation with her, the way that we communicate. I channeled what she would want that symbol to look like, draw it. I'm not even, I'm not a visual artist. You know, I'm a, I'm a writer as far as my creative skill, I'm not a visual artist. So, but you know, do my best. Um, the ancient, the, gr the grimoire seals of the classics are not like stunning works of art either. They're tools crafted by a magician. So, so I'm doing this and then once it seemed to be satisfied, then I would do all out ritual with a fully cast circle and consecrate the seal, making offerings, you know, blessing it fully with the uh, purpose that it was to serve. And each, so the seal um, can serve simply as a form of communication with that goddess. And then um, I also imbued the seal of the Morrigan specifically to uphold works of magic for fearlessness. Mm -hmm. So, um, because fear, fear is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. it's, it's, it's like, you get the, it's a whole Morgan. thing. Right. It's a whole thing. So anyway, it was so good. Like the seal was so great. And I started years before I, um, got the book out there, I started sharing it with other Morrigan practitioners. And so I could feel the seal gaining in power the more people used it to help augment their workings with her. Um, and I then I, I figured, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna make one for a whole bunch of the the deities that I work with, not just for myself, but deities that that I act as a, an intermediary for on behalf of my clients and my students and stuff. A lot of times I'm a shamanic practitioner and a, a channeler and, you know, all kinds of various things. And so I decided to do that. So basically what this is, is it's a modern day grimoire of seals, but in the classical style that are meant to help the magician access the legions of these goddesses. And so there's 13 different goddesses, um, with seal, seal, they're all fully consecrated and ready to use, you know, the second that you open that book, um, you can use those symbols in your magic. Now, the book also goes into a lot of teaching about the seals and, um, all different creative ways in which you can use them beyond just very formal spell castings. Um, and it goes into offerings and building relationship with the deities so that the, well, there's a concept. Yeah, I mean, and so the seals can be used for that too, though, and I recommend that in the book. You know, hey, don't just don't just tap into this and say this is what I want, please, um, because if you go to a party and I introduce you to my friend and he says I'm a doctor, like he's not going to appreciate it if you go, oh my god, dude, can you help me fix my back? Like he's not gonna, <laughs> you know, he's gonna be like nice to meet you too. You know, you make friends <laughs> or you ask someone for help and advice and stuff. So, uh, I, you know, I promote that. Like the seals can be used to help just open communication first so you can see what it's like to have an exchange and then you can build your magic. You know, I think I heard a couple of years ago, somebody refer that to vending machine gods. Right. Or dial a, <laughs> dial a deity. Yeah, I thought that was just a great con because I I never really thought of it in that 
literal terms, but I'm, you know, yeah, okay, that makes sense to me, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's a line to walk with everything. I mean, you have to start a relationship somewhere. I mean, if you think about it, like it, there's an apt metaphor. Like if you need a new roof on your house and you don't know a roofer, you have to dial one up. But maybe you're going to ask your friends like, hey, do you have a recommendation on someone who would be cool? Like, do you think I would want for this? And then you're going to talk to them and then they're going to give you a quote and you're going to get a feel for their personality and their price, what they need in exchange. And well, so, you know, you can start that conversation with the gods, you know, like, OK, I this is a two way street. If we work magic together, you know, how would that benefit you and what might you require of me? because it is going to be an exchange. And what will the nature of our relationship be like? And do we have goals in common and things like that? And so they that's want just, to those things. That's just so huge because people don't realize that there's an energy exchange. It's not just, you know, give me the car and I'll go do the work for you. You, you know, it's like, well, why don't you do some work <laughs> and the, to and help the, you get your car? You know? oh, and the energy exchange has to be, fitting for what the ask is. You, it can't be like, I want an amazing new job that helps me pay all my bills and is super rewarding and has growth potential. And I'm going to pour you a glass of wine in exchange. That, that's not good enough. You know, you've got to put effort. You know, you, you're going to have to spread that deity's name through the world. You, you know, you're going to have to walk their ways and support their causes if you want something that's that life-changing like a great new career option, <laughs> you know? So it has to be fitting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you ask for. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Woo. Well, we could talk about that for a while. All right. So let's change gears just a little bit. When you're kind of at, at a point where you're, you know, and maybe you're not one of these people, but I know I am, and I have a pretty good idea you are too. And you get to those points where you feel a little overwhelmed, you know, and you feel kind of unfocused or you've lost focus temporarily. What do you do to get back in whack? Well, I'm, I'm going to use that a lot more now. That's going to be yeah. kind of my thing now. <laughs> when I realize that I'm not in whack. <laughs> That's I, like a 30 second commercial. <laughs> what you need is the new. <laughs> this could be a whole product called the unfuckery. <laughs> yeah, but you can just call it in whack so that yeah. it could still child friendly, like it can still be sold in stores, you know. Um as seen on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look at I'm a I may not be the best example because I, I really am a very, very disciplined person by nature. It kind of comes easily. I, I love practices and routines, so I do not have a hard time sticking to them. But I look at things like the first thing I always, my workouts, how is my exercise level? And I know this varies greatly for everyone, but I have an exercise level that I usually, which is pretty intense that I usually work out at every day. And if I haven't been able to upkeep that, I'll be out of whack. <laughs> um, meditation. I, I can't stress enough that, you know, there is no such thing as I can't meditate. That's I've heard I've taught I have a whole like mage adept training level in my order and I have them do meditation boot camp for a month um, and and then they have to promise that they're going to try to meditate for 20 minutes a day every day from that point forth through the rest of the year of training. Um, it, but it, you don't need anything to do it. it it's life changing. It's, I mean, that's what it pays for the party. It's the way I look at it. Yeah, because, you know, it does. There's never a moment of meditation wasted. And on those days where you're like, I'm too frazzled or I just don't have time for meditation, then you need to meditate twice. Mm -hmm. You need it more. <laughs> no, you, yeah. You, you really do. You know, and it's, I know it sounds like kind of douchey to say that, but it just, is true and you won't know it until you really like give it a try. But here's what I teach, like my, it, when you meditate, it's just like working out. It's not like you can do it a little bit and then, oh, I'm good because I figured out what that's like. You have to upkeep that muscular strength. It's the strength 
to be able to shift your focus. So when you're out of whack, that generally means your focus is all over the place. And it's on things that would not normally be of your choosing, but your meditation practice proves to you that you get to fucking choose where you put your focus. That's what meditation does. And you can't forget that. You know, you that's the thing. You do get to choose. I'm not saying it's easy. And there are times in life when it's really not easy to choose where to put your focus, but it is possible. And the, the better you are with your meditation practice, the more possible it is. So that's a huge, huge, huge one. I, 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 I can't understate that because to me, it's I end up able to pick out those instances where I would go down the rabbit hole. You know, and then I have that moment of pause. Okay, <laughs> we're at a crossroads now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's it, hilarious. Yeah. Like, you sit there and you're watching the nature of your mind and you're like, what an idiot. Look, look what it's doing now. <laughs> I, my mind See, does. This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> and if you're like me, there's also always a song playing in the back of my mind every second of every day, no matter what, as like a, a bicameral track, really. Like I can't really shut it off. So I just have to change the tune if it doesn't fit what I'm doing. But, like a record player, you just kind of hit it so it skips. You know? <laughs> yeah, but I go in to meditate and then I'm sitting there like, don't bring me down. <laughs> Wait, 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 I'm supposed to be meditating, <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, it. I mean, by finding the humor in watching what your mind does, you also treat yourself better. You know, you're like that, like, look at you, look at, look at you mind. You're like, you're hilarious. I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate what you're trying to do here. You know, so you can get a lot of like self-love and self-care and stuff out of the meditation practice too, that can get you more in whack. <laughs> you know, and, and I think you hit a good point there. I, I think sometimes people think this path, this journey is so solemn, you know, and it's far from it. You know, yes, you have those intense focused moments, but you know, life's fun. <laughs> can be. It it, you know? really, it should be. I mean, it's not always fair and it's not always easy, but we got to find the richness. We got to find the fun and our minds are hilarious. <laughs> yep. Okay. So what are your pet peeves? Ah, uh, hmm. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let me count the ways. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to think of one right off the top. Uh, I'm a pretty, pretty forgiving person. I mean, one of my biggest pet peeves, I guess, is um, when uh, people want what they want, but they won't communicate about it, mm. um, or their communications are are very um, pushy and and bullyish you know, but I'm a Gemini. Like I like a nice two way street where we all see both sides of the coin. And, you know, we, we can really understand that middle ground that we'd all love to walk together. Um, I've just, I've had, you know, people leave my life, not many, but like a couple times just because apparently like they must have had some kind of expectation of me or of my group or something that, went unspoken and then when they become disgruntled i want to have a conversation that's kind that has back and forth to it where you know and a lot of times um i realize that then those people will just ghost which okay like that's their choice if they don't want to talk about something but at least i don't i don't like not having a back and forth um so Communication. Like, I, I guess a pet peeve is like people who would rather like just take their toys and leave than have a nice discourse. But I've encountered it a lot, yeah. um, it, it, especially in, you know, over the years, like, yes, we have about 120 active members in my order right now. But, you know, a handful of times over the past 10 years, there would be someone who 
it, it must have been their social needs weren't being met, or I wasn't running something the way that they expected it to. But instead of, or like in one case, um, I had someone who was demonstrating some racist behaviors. Mm. And, you know, I reached out really nicely saying, you know what, I would like to talk about sensitivity, you know, to um, issues because I have a strict policy against any prejudicial behaviors of any kind. Um, and uh, so, but she wouldn't even talk about it. So, you know, and left trying to create all kinds of chaos on the way out, you know, it's, I don't know. I'm a big communicator. Um, so pulling communication and, you know, is, is a pet peeve of mine. Um, I'm sure there's many others. <laughs> I've also, I have also, oh, I don't like, um, oh, this isn't good that I can now think of more the more I speak. But... <laughs> Went from, I don't have any to, oh God, look at this list. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, Let me work on my meditation practice here just a second. <laughs> I, right. I really, I don't, I really don't like any kind of extreme fundamentalism at mm. all. Mm. Um, oh, from I, anybody. Right, from anybody, <laughs> especially in the spiritual and magic, but like, I just don't, I I don't tell anyone that there's only one way to do anything. Like, yeah, I do train people in ritual skills and all that, but they they can take it and do what they want with it. That, you know, um, I don't want anyone to be, I don't want, to, I don't want to be told what to believe or that there's one right way of, of anything. And mm -hmm. so I don't like fundamentalist behavior. Um, I don't like when people, <laughs> I've been uh, accused of um, toxic positivity. And I think that a pet peeve in that case is that they don't really understand what that phrase is meant to mean. Um, because I don't go around saying, just be positive. That's, a, I, I've gotten <laughs> accused of toxic posi positivity because I'm like naturally uh, uh, an optimistic you know, like in inspiration based kind of person. It just is like, this, this is just how I am. It's like, I show up, it's, it's the same every single day. This is my attitude all the time. Like what, how we're talking right now, doesn't change. Like I'm honest, but, but I'm also just like content. And I've been told like, well, it's difficult because it's you're you give off toxic positivity. I'm like, what? <laughs> I think toxic positivity is when you try to put it like on someone as a rule, like you have to do that, but I don't, I don't do that. So I don't like, you know, stuff like that where, you know, basically just kind of getting blamed for someone else's like ego stuff. <laughs> Reminds me of that scene in the movie um, from Shakespeare with love, where the guy was like, you know, how is it going to work out? And the guy's going, I don't know. It's a mystery. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. you know, it was just like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We just have to go ahead and, and try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I think, too, um, it, I guess, you know, people getting on high horses is a bit, you know, like it's it's all ego based stuff. But I could find a lot of pet peeves in there, I suppose, you know, um, people have a cause and or a belief and they get really angry about it and then the way that they cause division and so discord with their beliefs because the and and the, the where the pet peeve is is that the whole reason for it is that they have made that thing the basis of their identity so mm. they're afraid of anything that threatens that idea or anyone who doesn't support them in that cause and I try to like, I'm not saying I'm perfect at anything or, but like on the flip, on the other end of that, because I see it, what I try to do is practice imagining like, okay, what if somebody told me today that every single thing I've ever thought or believed or done was wrong? Like they disproved it. I think I would be all right. I mean, I might cry initially, <laughs> but I think then I'd be like, but you know, I'm still myself. And I like who I am and I try to conduct myself in the best way that I possibly can. So no one can take that. 
And so even if everything I've thought before was wrong, like my, I try to make it so that my identity isn't tied specifically mm. to anything. It's actually one of the reasons why I like running an order in American witchcraft, because it's a melting pot of observing um, the belief systems from around the world that have come to influence what magic in America is today. And so it is There's by nature, not that fundamentalist. <laughs> so I, yeah. so I like that we're not tying our, you know, our beliefs to one thing. Cause that yeah, I'd be like, magic. you know what, but I'm still psychic because I see some ice cream in my future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're not taking that from me. <laughs> <laughs> You're spot on. Yeah, you're spot on with that. Uh, anything we can do to make sure that happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you most excited about right now? Uh, I know you've got a lot going on and you're doing a lot of stuff. And I know there's some other stuff that's coming out and all that kind of stuff. But what what are you most excited about right now? Um, I really am most excited about how my life as an author has progressed in the past couple of years because um I've always been a language nerd. I love to finesse. Really? All the books in the background would not have been a clue. <laughs> this doesn't even show you a, a first fraction of what's here. This is a whole library with stacks uh, and, and a restricted section like Hogwarts and all. and all. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I self-published my first book a number of years back, which was just like an intro to like my thoughts on witchcraft and how I got there. Simple, accessible to everybody, like easy book. The Goddess Seals is definitely much more for the magical practitioner. My, my other book, You Might Be a Witch, anybody could pick that up. It doesn't matter if you're witchy or not and just learn a little something, you know, and, and read a little something interesting. Um, the Goddess Seals is a grimoire for magic users to access. Um, but uh, the crux of my, my spiritual practice is my lucid dreaming practice. Mm. Um, I have a, like a kind of rare talent for it. I've really honed it, but I, I say talent, but I'm also super disciplined. So that has supported the underlying that helps. in a huge <laughs> way. Yeah. Um, so I, um, I do have a book coming out early next year on um, lucid dreaming specifically for the magician. Cause there's a lot of lucid dreaming books out there, but not ones that blend like how much magic you can do in that space. And then what is all of the magic that you can do in waking to predispose you to lucidity? So it's a two sided coin, typical Gemini topic to, to typical Gemini way to look at something I know, but um, so that is coming out early uh 2025 with Llewellyn and then I'm really just liking my relationship um with my editor there and you know I so it just bodes well for uh having channels for all of the other stuff that I would love to write because there's plenty <laughs> um getting out there um so uh it's been it was amazing to work with um so Azoth Press is the publisher who did the goddess seals and then they sell it through the platform of miskatonic books which some people might be familiar with because they're very niche occulty <laughs> um but um you know and they they put out great high quality stuff and i would absolutely publish with them again um but i'm kind of excited but it, but it is more um pinpointed you know to this uh, a sort of uh more discerning occult population, I guess, Miskatonic books, like high level, like some hard reads that, you know, they sell a lot of that kind of stuff. Llewellyn, you know, I'm kind of excited that there might be a bigger reach um, with mm. that too. So, yeah. um, so I'm just excited, but I also, I, I would like to teach uh, possibly more on lucid dreaming outside of my order um, to the public. And so I'm going to kind of get an idea by how well the book is received to see what I can do with that. Like what, what would people want specifically from me given my history with it and, and the things that I have done in that space. So, so um, that's what I'm most excited about right now because there's no magic I, I've ever been able to access that is more intense uh, and more um, evolution fueling than my lucid practice yeah 
So I that's feel the same way about metal. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Well, I mean, I, I think it's you know our our work right with a capital W um, is about finding out what that is. Yeah. You know, and then when you find out what that is, you just need to do a lot of that. Yeah. You know, that's what I tell people, man. Just find out your gig, right? Everybody's got a different gig. Um, and find that do do the work you need to put the, you know energy into it to figure out what that is. Everybody has a specialty, and totally. then when you find that out, just do a lot of that. Now it may change, you know, from that thing to another thing later. But right, but the you you got to do what it is that you got to do because only you can do that. Yeah, um, right. You know, I've I've been real. I spent on the way up to um, sacred space. Byron and I rode together. You know, she was my sidekick. For, for the weekend, we, whatever. Um, and we were talking about, you know, I'm really getting into reclaiming things, right? Um, you know, I learned a couple of years ago about reclaiming prayer beads, right? Because that was, it was never really part of, of my tradition personally at any time, but I see the value in it. And I, I use it now and I've Pretty much every day for the last two years, I use prayer briefs in my morning meditations. And the 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 thing, the new thing that I'm I'm taking is the um uh, the body of Christ, right? So there's a body of Christ in, in in Christian mythology that you know it takes certain people to be the hand, and some people to be the foot, some people to be the mouth and ears. And, you know, not everybody is good at one thing, right? Mm -hmm. It takes everybody to make the thing work. And I, I'm t I'm I'm owning some of that now, and I'm saying, okay, well, you know, we need to do more of this within our community because we're not very good at letting people be who they need to be. You know, everybody's got to be this. This 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 is what you got to be the square box, or you're not a successful pagan. You've got to fit in the square box, and that is just so untrue. And it we're doing our community a disservice by not standing up against that. You know, not that we're, you know, anti that. It's just that not everybody can be that, nor should they be that. Right. You know, it's, I'm, yeah. and I am just full evangelistic about it, <laughs> lack of a better way of saying it. <laughs> My Southern Baptist falls out every now and then, right? I'm just, it's just what it is, you know, but I think we need to promote that more within our community. So that's what makes the community healthy. You know, not everybody can be a Nikki or a Stephanie or a Byron or an, an Evo or you, you can't do that, you know, right. and making that your goal is does not only a disservice to them, but to you, too. Right. It's counterproductive you know, to your yeah. you know, you, to aspire directly after someone else. You can you can be inspired by, you know, the people in your community that are doing some cool things, but You've got to use it to fuel what is uniquely yourself. What where's your passion? You know, what do you really want? You know, and it can't chances be are, yeah. What yeah. you're passionate about is going to be your going to be your work. Right. <laughs> chances yeah. are it's probably going to be, you know, it's just you got to figure out how it fits. You know, what's what where are the puzzle pieces on it? Yeah, all right. So that's my TED talk for the day. It's just that's <laughs> just I'm I'm living about that stuff. You know, it's just like we we we're we're not doing ourselves any favors. We're 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 fighting over dumb shit. Right. That keeps us from doing the things that we need to be doing. You know, because yeah. Anyway. All right. Yeah. And and by say, you know, by aspiring after one person and then saying, well, you, if they hook into that, then you know, they like the way that person leads ritual or teaches about the gods or whatever but then because they're making that their identity instead of their own self then you get these like battling you know groups where someone's like well you can't uh do it that way because you that's can't not worship the morgan that it's way like that's happened you can't worship the morgan that way what <laughs> yes i can <laughs> <laughs> um you know yeah so everyone does yeah you gotta you gotta find your own you know what and, and i'm a full disclosure i used to be one of those i used to be kind of, i'm okay i'm capricorn you know and it's very i'm a very yes scale of yes to no right you know it's either it is or it's not right <laughs> and you know it's not an orange 
right? It, 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 I mean, it's an orange. It's not a grapefruit. It's not a tangerine. It's an orange. Um, and then I got this um, correction. I'm the best way I can say it. And was basically told, who the fuck are you to tell me how I can and cannot show up? It's a citrus. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Who am I? Whatever, you know, right. All right, I'm gonna let go of all that stuff. And I'm just going to, yeah. you know, I'm, I need to get back to doing what I need to be doing. You know? And, you know, and I fully support everybody doing their thing. I want people to do their thing because we need a bunch of people doing their thing. You know, that's the only way we're going to make it work, you know, and fighting over this little mox nicks bullshit. It ain't, ain't, ain't getting it, no. you know? Um, anyway, that's just, like I said, I, I'm just, yeah, I'm all about it. And yeah. Yeah. All I right. love how, how passionate you are about the metal craft. And I think it's important because, uh, there, like we were saying earlier, that there's very few people, you know, doing what you do. And that doesn't mean someone has to try to be you, but they're going to be able to take inspiration. And then maybe a bit of that, you know, informs their craft. Yeah. And they need to do take take what it is and build on it. You know, I don't. OK, I have written a book on it. But other than that, you know, it's not I don't own it. Right. This right, is just right. a foundational part. You go go do your thing. You yeah. know, and if you see copper differently than I do, I don't care. You know, as long as you're doing the work, just do the work. <laughs> you, you when know? you mentioned uh, metal prayer beads and metal, then I was wondering, like, have you done that yet? Have you have you made like little little copper beads or anything for yourself? Actually, I have not. <laughs> that could be my prayer beads. I actually made at at retreat, and right. I've been carrying. Well, if you make some metal ones, like think of how that goes when you move from one bead to the next with your fingers. Yeah, no, don't don't give me more projects. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just did though. <laughs> now I got something else to do. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what what is the most interesting place that you've been? Ooh, that. Like in this reality? <laughs> I just, that's, uh, I, that's just a question. You figure out how to make it fit. Um. All right. Well, I'm going outside of this reality then. Okay. Um, I So in lucid dreaming, I you can play with like where you go. And um, I've played with uh, time travel a mm. little bit. So um, my most interesting... A uh, place to go was probably when I tried to <laughs> lucid dream. I, you know, I called out my plan to the dream. Take me to Salem, Massachusetts, in 1692, because I'm directly descended from one mm -hmm. of the hanged accused witches, Samuel Wardwell. Um, and uh, so it was amazing because you know I'm in the lucid dream, whatever stage I was in, and then it all shifted. And I was near water and all of a sudden, like I was near the ocean and I could actually, it worked, but I realized that it would, it's of course a dream reality of Salem in 1692, but was nuts is that I didn't know what it would look like or anything. And it was actually accurate, you know, to part of the coastline. Um, but you won't only, when you do that through something like lucid dreaming, you won't only, um, encounter people who were there in physical reality in our earth's history. So you'll encounter other dreamers mm. in reality too. So like I met another woman there who was also not from 1692. So that was just so interesting for me because it started to teach me more about the multiverse and conscious awareness and how the nature of our realities intermingle. So that's, but then as I was talking, I was thinking, oh, should I change my answer? Cause the, the, um, maybe the most interesting place I've ever been for real is the lucid void. So if, uh, um, at one point I practiced astral projecting out of a lucid dream. So like you already create, I'm already fully lucid. And then I decided I, I went, I, I used a method that is all Dr. Strange. Like I started like- That's like inception, isn't I started it? Making a dream a within a dream within a dream. 
I, did I they made, make a movie like that? <laughs> I, I made, yeah, I made a portal out of energy because you can do this kind of thing in dream realities because you're not limited by mm -hmm. the physical densities that we are here, right? So you can see what's happening with the energy real well. And, and so I made a portal and I was chanting, when I move through this portal, I will leave my physical body. When I move through this portal, I will leave my physical body. And I built the portal and then I dove through it. And I was then like just hanging in a void and abyss with no body so basically you feel like you're just like a floating eyeball um of awareness but it was really freaking cool and I kind of just was getting the downloads like oh this is the raw stuff of which everything that's consciously perceivable is made uh, so that's that's the most interesting place I've ever been. <laughs> you know, I, 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 one thing I'd like to tag on to is all that comes from doing the work. Right, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't get there today. No. It, you know, it's like I've, I've told people countless times that 20 years ago when I started, I would not be able to handle where I'm at today. I was not um, emotionally or, or mentally mature enough <laughs> or education wise in, in or education as far as, you know, I, I just, I would not have been able to handle it, you know? So I think so also we need to, as um, elders, what, not leaders, but elders, you know, we also need to give people a pass in their, in their toddler years. You know, I'm not saying that to belittle, but I mean, there's, you know, we have to give them the ability and the comfortability of falling down to of skin course. and eat. You know, we need to, and I think sometimes we don't, we try to say, you need to get where I'm at. You know, we don't, you know, we, they just need to get where they're at. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, you asked me where the most interesting place I've ever been. And so there was a lot to kind of quickly rifle through to try to decide but that also, like you're saying, that that's come after hundreds, if not thousands, of failed attempts at things. <laughs> so well, you know that yeah. I don't just like wake up and say, "Oh, I'm gonna astral project into the lucid void today." I had to work to get the right conditions. I planned that out weeks in advance. You know, like this isn't some easy, yeah. Well, it's like I, you know, I tell people, my students, when they come here. Um, it's as almost as important to figure out what doesn't work as it does what does. Because once you figure out what doesn't work, you don't have to do that anymore. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, yeah, okay, I don't know what I want, but I know that ain't it. You know, <laughs> it's, you know? and that's, that, that's important learning. Learning what not, what doesn't work is important. So much so, <laughs> yeah, you know, if yeah, you don't yeah. realize that it's not working. You'll keep doing it probably. <laughs> you and, and, and you spend a, a long time in time. Right. In fact, I think this is a good, good time to ask this question. If, if you could talk with it and you do, so you probably have an easy answer to this. What would you like to tell new, new pagans? Pagans, once again, the umbrella, you know, I'm not leaving, excluding anybody is just, you know, an earth-based religion, whatever you want to call it. And I'm sure I just pissed off everybody, but it's just, what would you tell them? If you could just tell them one thing. Um, <laughs> only one. I mean, yeah. I, I guess, um, oh, I don't know, man, that that's tough. Like I, I guess just never stop learning and learn mm -hmm. from multiple sources, you know, learn and be careful of the internet, you know, be careful of gurus. Like I, one of the goals I always have in, in my own order and with my students is to create good lifelong students. Mm -hmm. You know, so to me, learning is health and healing the amount you're learning is is the amount you're engaging with allowing new experiences in life and allowing yourself to be changed you know by the by experiences of life so 
there's a, you have to kind of let go into that. You know, you have to let learning change you. But, you know, there's so many ways now. Um, I guess it's that, like, be a lifelong learner because that's that's going to result in thriving, which is really what everybody wants, you know, at, at, at the bottom of it all. Like, we, we just want to be happy. Um, so, you know, paganism is not like the answer to happiness because we might seem at the from the outside to be more accepting of, you know, different light. We are like a lot of times paganism is like that, but it's not the answer to happiness. Like your happiness is, is a result of how much you engage with your life, you know, in a rich way. Like that's what makes you happy. So I feel like learning is the crux. That's what I would say. There's so many other things I would want to say though. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's you know from from a Gemini teacher, I guess that's what I'll say. <laughs> well, I think that's important because I mean, the, the the more you learn, your your views are going to change, you know. And I, so I think you know to tag on to that, I think would be you know permission, right? Permission to change. Yeah, give because, yourself permission to change, yeah. and also follow teachers who learn continually themselves. That, you know, that's how we stay out of fundamental, <laughs> fundamentalism too, you know, by like, I'm never going to stop trying to learn new things, master new things, you know, learn from new people. I'm never going to stop. Um, and I hope that for newcomers to the craft and to paganism as well. You know, and we've gotten to the point to where if I disagree with you, we're now enemies. I don't know where that comes from. I do. You no, know, because well, <laughs> I do. It's it's this identification with their beliefs. So the fear, the reason why you're their enemy now if you disagree with them is because they are afraid of loss of identity. Mm. That's what they're afraid of. You threaten their identity because they have attached too tightly to that belief. Too tightly. We have to be open to things changing. We, we, we really do. I know I, I met someone, uh, a, a writer that, you know, I've got several of the books and really, you know, learned a lot from them, but I don't agree with everything they said. No. I and, and, and I told them, that. I said, you know, I love your work, but I don't agree with everything that you say. But it, it also means I don't hate you. <laughs> you know, just because I don't, I don't agree with you, all of it, you, you know, doesn't mean that we have to, you know, break out in fisticuffs. Right. You know, because once again, learning what not to do is important. It just doesn't work for me. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It just doesn't work for me. That person you know, who sees you as their enemy is is kind of living with a, a like limitations. A, a criterion on the world that they're not okay with other people being in the world who don't agree with their underlying beliefs. Not and everybody needs a pickup truck. You know, some people need a minivan or right. a sports car being right. mid midlife crisis. Um, I don't have one, but it doesn't mean I don't want one. You know? Right. <laughs> you know? We all are going to have different beliefs about stuff. And, you know, I, I rarely agree with every single thing another author says, but I love to learn from the things that that make me feel like I'm expanding um, and adding. You know, yeah. and add it to your your bits, and now you've got something different. You know, right. and it works for you. And take something from over here, and something from over there, and it's just, I don't know. yeah, yeah. I I mean, I don't expect. I mean, well, you can't. You know, as as a, if you write something, you can't expect everybody to agree, and and there's going to be people who don't, yeah. and that's fine. Like that's that's why the world is cool. Like you said earlier, you know, it takes all types. Um, so we can't all have the same opinions on everything the world would be really really boring <laughs> without color you right, know? Right. it would be without color all right so one last question well one more after this um what can we do individually what's the one thing that we can do individually that would make our community as a whole better ah uh. 
Um, as individuals, I suppose, you know, it's, it's just showing up without expectation. Mm. So coming together, like continuing yeah, to do things where we, we come together, whether it's physically at events or whether it's online connecting with people or whether it's, you know, supporting each other's work, but doing it not because your ego is expecting it to fuel some kind of belief that you've tied your identity to, but just that because you want, because, because think about it, like, don't you want community that is open like that, open and supportive like that of you? If you want that, then you need to come to community with that same attitude. Because everything is, see, everything that we've already said is tying together because everything's an exchange. <laughs> and if you don't, like, leave your expectations at the door when you come together in pagan community, then you are going to get a very limited, you know, taste um, of what's really out there. Um, There's a lot out there. So showing up though, like you have to engage. People are afraid to engage a lot of times too. Like you have to be brave and put yourself out there, but try to do it without any particular expectation. It's hard. It's easy, you know, way easier said than done. Yeah, because I mean, there's so many bullies that are out there. You've got all the gatekeepers and every time you say something wrong, they're, you know, you know you're wrong, you yeah. know, and let me show you how, you know, you're going to live in your wrongness, you know, <laughs> it's, you know, and it, and, and at the same time, you know, we don't have people that are standing up for those folks. And I, I can say I've been guilty of that before. Um, and that that has changed. Um, you know, because I, I can remember specific that what, what changed it for me was this one person um, had been saving up their money and they bought a statue of their deity. Right. And they were showing it off. They were proud of it. You know, I've saved up money. I've got, you know, the statue. Look how how pretty it is and I really like it. And then someone else said, yeah, but that, you know, symbolizes yada, 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 and all this other diatribe stuff. And it crushed her. Right. And I'm thinking, what? What an idiot. There's no need. There's you no know, need what, what, you know, what's the object of the exercise? You know, if, if you are that hell bent on education, you should do it privately. You don't right. need to call, you know, how many people, how many of us would have, learned a lot in school if the teacher told us what an idiot we were every time we gave an answer because it didn't agree with her box no we would have mentally checked out real early on you know so now you're you're not you're you're limiting what happens is you're limiting your pool of education <laughs> but right. you're going to get new ideas there are, you're going to be a you know totally. i don't know the word for it you probably do but you know we're you, you, it, where, where I grew up, your family tree ain't gonna fork. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and I understand, like I that there are people who are very knowledgeable and have devoted, you know, their life's work to studying the academic nature of the lore, you know, the accuracy of the lore, and though they might be like, oh my God, the goddess was never depicted that way, you know, in the mythology. So that's a blasphemous statue you've got. Like there's, there's no need for that. Like let people like what they like, you know, that, like you said, you can offer a course. People can sign up to learn from you what, you know, what you have gathered. Um, but yeah, it, it's again, it really comes back to that theme of they're threatened by the thing that they find really important, not being upheld um, by someone else uh, in the community. Well, like I said, it goes back to who are you to tell me how I can and cannot show up? And I'm just not there. <laughs> you know, I'm just, you know, I haven't achieved that level of authority because i just you know i just i have i can't keep up you know it's like i told you know i don't believe half the shit i say most of the time you know so <laughs> just, i'm not going to expect to believe everything you say you know <laughs> well right i mean i might have like, different answers to these questions you know <laughs> a, a week from now who knows <laughs> yeah, you know let because me sleep on it and i'll come up with something different you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> nikki thank you for your time one last question is is there anything that you would like to ask me before we end this? I'll give everybody an opportunity since I've given you a bunch of questions that you can ask me one thing if you want. 
Oh, um, I guess, uh, I don't know. I, you know what? I just feel like you have such a great attitude. Um, and you know, you've mentioned that you wouldn't have been able to do, uh, 20 years ago, you know, what you're able to do now. So what do you think was the special sauce, you know, or was, you know, what, what, what is the main theme or ingredient that caused you to evolve, to be able to see things from such a, from such a grounded, capable vantage point? Well, I've never been called grounded before, so thank you. I'm all right well, you know, you're, you're <laughs> I've got it on Cap video now. <laughs> got your Capricorn thing going. I'm make on. a meme out of it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> make sure everybody knows that I'm grounded. Um, um, you know, I mean, I kind of, I kind of grew up on my own. You know, individual, um, solo a lot. So you know, what I had was me, um, and I think I've. I, I grew up to the point that, you know, I, the way I grew up, I was responsible for me. You know, if I needed something, I was the one that was going to get it. You know, I couldn't wait on someone else to provide it. Um, and I think because of that, you know, it gave me that sense of can do, right. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, I was, I was a fairly good athlete, you know, in, in school <clears throat> and, you know, being in the service kind of helped instill some of that too. You know, you just, you know, it doesn't rain in the army. It rains on the army, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, and it just kind of helped part of my poor makeup is just, you know, I just haven't figured it out yet. You know, it's not that it can't be done. I just ain't got through enough. That's not how you do it. Um, and in some of it's just, you know, beyond with just sheer dumb luck. You know, I think, you know, but I think wasn't it Jefferson that said, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get or something like that. You know, so I just, <laughs> you know, yeah. so I think if anything, it's just I, I just do the work. You know, yeah. it's I had a teacher one time that said, you know, the, the important thing in life is that you show up, you pay attention and let go of the outcome. You know, and only thing that I can do that I learned from another teacher was to give it all I got mm -hmm. with what I have. From where I'm at, you, you know, and yeah. that's just kind of what I do. You know, I, I I do this thing until this thing doesn't work for me anymore, and then I go do something else. So um, it, it it sounds like your your recipe is kind of self reliance with persistence and trying to release expectation whenever you can. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 <laughs> kind of, you know, in a way, kind of like you, I'm just I'm trying to learn. You know, uh, I, I want, you know, I don't have quite the ferocious reeny reading that you have because um, it's just, I, I don't, my mind doesn't work that way. But, you know, I, I, I do have a, I, I want more than what I have because I know there's more out there. Yeah. Um, my, my goddess demands that I, I, I grow and growth is hard. Growth is painful. So once I kind of accept, oh shit, that's gonna hurt, it's okay. Right. <laughs> you know, and when it happens, I'm not surprised. So oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> you know, it's like I you know, I always know that no matter what group I'm in, there's always a jerk, right? It's just nature, you know, it's odds. So when I find it, I go, ah, there you are. Now I can work with everybody else. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to be that ugly about it, but I mean, when you build in the expectations that it's going to be hard, you know, you build in those expectations that, you know, it, there's going to be tears, there's going to be blood, there's going to be struggle and strife, and it's not going to be easy so that when you do hit that patch, because you will, then, you know, you, it gives you gives me permission to push on through it. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, okay, well. All right. Now what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You you know, you're bringing up a really important thing about challenges and obstacles. You know, a lot of times people are trying to avoid them, but a, a lot of times the only way is to work through the pain of the challenges and then 
see what you're like, you know, coming out the other side. You know, I, I heard someone say the comfort zone is the worst place to be because no evolution. I'm scared of the comfort zone. No evolution happens in the comfort zone. <laughs> I'm scared of it because I know there's something really nasty waiting around the corner. <laughs> right. you know, it's like, no, no, no. no I, don't want, I don't want easy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? but, but your you attitude know, but, about that is really good. <laughs> well, I mean, my goddess has taught me two very valuable lessons. Um, one is kind of a re reminder of that song. You know, what, what are you going to do? You're just going to stand there and bleed. You know, it's one, you know, which means I've got to con constantly dust myself off. And the other one um, that she taught me was, that's not your cow. <laughs> right. And, and you know the story, but in the uh, Tombo Ragavna, you know, the Morgan meets Kukulin and he says, you know, what are you doing with that cow? And the Morgan says, this is not your cow. <laughs> this is not your cousin's cow, your friend's cow. Nobody knows this is not your cow. And because I'm a control freak, <laughs> there's a shocker, right? You know, I want to make sure everything works the way it's supposed to work, you know, and it's my responsibility to make sure it works. Um, but there are a lot of things that I'm not good at, right? And there's a lot of things I have no control over, no matter how much I want to have control of them. And she has taught me that I need more than me in order to be robust, Right. I need community. I've spent so much of my time lately. Well, not lately. The, you know, there was a vast portion of time where I just disengaged from community um, that I need community. You know, we are humans are pack animals. You know, we we cannot live in a silo. We can. We can't be healthy in a silo. Right. Okay. We We need other people. And for me to be able to reach out and say, OK, well, I'm not good at this, but I know somebody that is. Let's trade. You know, I can do what I do and you can do what you do. And we're both win. Right. You mm -hmm. know, I'm always trying to look at win win situations, because I think if you look at relationships as a win win. You have much healthier relationships. You know, getting back to the energy exchange. Right. I mean, it's like, OK, well, I don't know how to you know, I don't know how to do graphic design, but I know somebody that does. Now, if you'll do graphic design, what can I do as a barter so it's e so it's even, right? So it needs to be a win-win. Ever, you know, I don't ever want to get over on anybody because that's that's not the way I want to live. Well, it doesn't work. So in magic not long term. <laughs> in magic, we'd say like if you feel like you got a great deal, that means that you're gonna have to pay the rest in some other way, some other time that was not of your choosing. And you don't yeah. want that. You want to know easy. what <laughs> <laughs> chances are you right. got schmucked. <laughs> there's, still a, there's still a bill coming. <laughs> yeah. And it's usually when the pipes are broke that it's gonna show up. You know? <laughs> right. Oh, great. They have a cave troll. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh wow well thank you for, for those of you that are um just doing the youtube thing we're, we'll end our time together here um those of you that are part of the patreon group we're going to talk about metal magic after this so if you're not a member go go do that you'll find all the notes down in the bottom all of nikki's credentials her uh, websites facebook links to the book all that kind of stuff would be down in the show notes. So make sure that you get those and, and support. We got to support each other in the ways that we can. Um, thanks for showing up. Thanks for um, your time, Nikki. I love you, darling. It, oh, it's always so fun being too. around. Thanks you. so much. Thanks so much. This is amazing. Right. Bye everybody. Bye. -bye.